Hey fellas, sorry I'm a little bit late on the update here, and sorry I haven't really been releasing any other content, I've just been a bit up to my eyes. Um, but here is the second week check-in for my Lenten penance, I suppose you'd call it, which was, for those who don't recall, to learn Portuguese with just a Bible, and with a dictionary. So, this also counts an English translation alongside it, I don't know if I've mentioned this in previous videos, but let's get into the progress. So, if you will recall from the last episode, I had almost finished Leviticus. Now, you'll also notice here this is a slightly different sheet, but I'll get into this in a minute. So, yeah, I finished Leviticus. And now I've finished the Gospel of John. I finished this today. And I finished the first epistle of John as well, which I finished on... I want to say either Sunday or... I think I finished it on Monday. Yeah, I finished it on Monday morning. So... I feel as if I'm going a lot quicker through these books. Now, I'm not sure if that's because the books are easier. Um, they are here, but um, in relative biblical difficulty terms, they aren't. Um, or if it's the fact that I'm not noting down words as I'm going and I'm just sort of absorbing the content. But I, I feel like I went a lot quicker through these. So, uh, the first um, epistle of John took me about... Well, it took me two days, but it could really have been done in one because... Over the last week, I've been celebrating some festivities, so I haven't had as much time to devote to Portuguese. And so I did the first two chapters in the evening um, one day, and I did the other bits uh, on the train the next day. So I figure I could have done that in one sitting. As for um, the Gospel of John, that went very quickly as well. So just to talk now, because this is going to influence what I'm going to talk about in terms of the lessons and what I'm going to do in future. Why are these difficulty scores different? Um, if anybody's watched this before, they will have seen the relative difficulty score of the Bible books based on the Bible itself. So um, when you see these here, they're essentially just um, slightly weighted averages of um, the difficulty of the average word inside the book. So like how often it occurs in the language, right? Now this isn't completely 100% accurate because it doesn't make any sort of discrimination when it comes to things like uh, endings of words, which are really important in Portuguese. Um, so it's not maybe it's not quite as difficult as this would seem. It's not like like the average word is the forty six thousandth most common um, among movies, but um, it because like you know there is the influence of um, of endings, but it's you know it's a fairly reasonable representation within the data set itself of how how good it is, right? So. Uh, where was I? I completely lost my train of thought. So, so basically, this is a table of the books of the Portuguese Bible compared with a data set from a place called Open Subtitles, which essentially correlates all of the movies uh, with open subtitles, and it takes them and gives them in a nice frequency list. So this should give you an idea of relative difficulty in comparison to um, you know speech on the movies which I imagine is a pretty good representation of what is actually spoken in real Portuguese. And this has resulted, quite naturally, I think, in um, much higher difficulty scores. Perhaps not quite as high as... Perhaps higher than I thought, though. So, uh, for comparison, um, let's find Leviticus here. So, Leviticus was... It had a value of about 8,500 when it was considered in, the, um, in terms of the rest of the Bible. Here, it's a lot higher. Um, all of them are generally higher. But there are certain ones that are better than others, and so I've done those. So what have I actually learnt this week? I learnt that I actually think, even though these values are a lot higher than they were, I still think that Leviticus was probably the perfect start, uh, probably the best single book to start with, in terms of um, uh, at least the ones I've come across, because it's so repetitive, right? It's It's got weird grammatical stuff going on so it uses the subjunctive constantly but because leviticus is so repetitive it's good for drilling in a lot of the more common words so you know en enos um enas or enas i don't see so much but enos um you know dos uh, like of of the or of those or um of like plural the um or in those you know like that that is repeated quite a lot there, and so that was great for grinding in. I don't think uh, that the um, the gospel or uh, the epistle, the first epistle of John, 
were as good for that, although the words are a lot... I can understand why this would be more relevant to regular speech, because it's a lot of forms of um, indicative. So for those who don't know, so you've got the subjunctive, which indicates will and command and stuff like this, and then you've got the indicative, which just says that something is... So, you know, instead of, like, he shall cook, he is cooking. Right, so he is cooking is indicative, and he shall cook is um, subjunctive, right? There's a lot more of the indicative kind going on inside of the Gospels, the Gospel of John and um, in the Epistle, in comparison to Leviticus. But I'd still insist people, I think people should start with, if they have biblical literacy, right, like start with Leviticus. If you don't, John is probably a, a, a just a, um, a better place to start because there isn't so much going on that's really an unfamiliar for a Christian. And so you'd have like theological questions and that would probably end up, if you're at least reasonable out, about it, you putting a lot more time in theology maybe than learning learning the books. So so yeah. I would uh I would say that. Nonetheless, they were comparatively, you know, it was it was fairly reasonable sailing. I'm still confused about certain things. Like I can't necessarily tell the difference always between uh what the verb to come and the verb to see. Because they, they look very similar on the page. It's like I think it's like ver and vir or something like that. Right, and I'm butchering the pronunciation because I haven't listened to Portuguese for any length of time at all. So if I'm butchering it, then that will be why. So, I would still say, I, I think that these are definitely worth reading, though. So, what am I going to do next? Uh, I was thinking, originally I, I actually selected earlier today the book of Psalms, which you will see is down here. Now, it teaches a decent number of words, 386, but if you look up here... Genesis teaches the same number of words, is shorter, and uses words that are more commonly found in the in the movies. So I think I'll just read the book of Genesis. I have no idea how long to expect to expect this will be, because this is actually as long. Let me, let me see um, very quickly. It's about as long. It's a little shorter than everything I've read before. So in total, I've read about forty thousand words. In uh, in Portuguese so far from from like over the last two and a half or well, not two and a half weeks like two two weeks and one day, right? This is a little under that, so I have a feeling that it will be quicker than um, two weeks, but I'm not sure just how quick it will be. It could be uh, that it's so simple that I'm I'm finished by the next update, but uh, we will um, we'll see. So. All of this uh, this update stuff aside, what about the rest of the stuff at the channel? I'm still working on the um, the first book of Samuel for the Latin readers. Uh, the book of Matthew should come out on the 15th, so that will be before the next update. And in terms of other videos, I've had ideas bouncing around, but I just haven't really gotten around to sitting down and making them. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that and found this um, informative. I'm also planning on making a final video at the end of this, probably on Easter Monday that will give a kind of a recapitulation of everything that I think I've learned from this exercise in a kind of an abstract sense, not just, well, I learned this kind of Portuguese. So yeah, uh, I hope you guys found this of some interest. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.